Hello there, and welcome to a program I've just made up called What's My Team? My name is Frank David, and as a Manchester United fan for over 50 years, I've chosen my all-time United starting 11 who I've painted, and I've had the privilege to see play. I'll be introducing them to you through the medium of portraits that I painted of them. So, without further ado, why don't you just sit back, relax, pour yourself a glass of sherry, and enjoy this episode I've made up called What's My Team? Peter Schmeichel, the Great Dane, and in this instance I'm not describing a breed of dog, I'm talking about a different kind of stupid animal. He's a goalkeeper, and possibly the only animal ever to escape with all his teeth intact after an indulging in some ungentlemanly fisticuffs with Skipper Roy Keane, after both getting squiffy in a hotel bar, which makes him number one in my book. My number two? No, not that kind of number two. I'm talking of the right-back kind. I've selected know-it-all Gary Neville, who has now long since hung up his football boots to take up football punditry. So now, instead of ramming opponents into touch, he's now ramming his self-opinionated views down everyone's throats, which sometimes right sound like a right crock of old, well, you know, that kind of number two. My central defence partnership sees the pairing of Messrs Rio Ferdinand and Yapstam. I don't care if Rio looks like Daffy Duck, said the manager of Manchester United, when asked to comment after claims that Mr Ferdinand's facial features resemble those of the Looney Tunes cartoon character. So long as he doesn't duck out of a challenge, he went on to say. Talking of Looney Tunes, Yap Stam, the big Dutch man, doesn't have the resemblance of a cartoon character, but that of a right hard bastard. Ask this fellow to bring you tulips from Amsterdam, and although he may well do so, you might find them stuck right up your jacket. The left-back position goes to the man who sported a 1970s hairstyle for most of his playing career, and was United's penalty king. Dennis Irwin, this reliable and steadfast fellow, hails from County Cork in the Republic of Ireland. But don't ask this genial gentleman for a corkscrew, unless you're of course a female, you happen to be married to him, and you go by the name of Mrs Irwin. On the right side of midfield, I chose the Cockney wide boy from Daffdale, London, David Beckham, or Golden Balls as some like to call him. However, his balls were more black and blue rather than golden when he was caught by his manager in the dressing room, with his hat jilted at a jaunty angle, his thumbs pulling out his braces, and given his teammates a rendition of Knees Up Mother Brown. He was quite literally given the boot, one which was kicked by his manager and which caught him square in the old fizz off, and the other when he was sent out packing to Real Madrid. A jolly good footballer though. Who else could control the centre of midfield like our very own Captain Marvel, or better known as Brian Robson? A tenacious player and a true Manchester United legend. Although later in his career he was blighted by a shoulder injury that would pop out more times than my missus would pop out to the corner shop. I'm just popping out to the corner shop. Can I get you anything? Ah uh, yes, uh, could you get me a quarter of mint humbugs please while you're down there? Thank you my dear. Ah, Sir Robert Charlton, the greatest footballer this country has ever produced. Bobby was the first Englishman to lift the European Cup. You know the European Cup. It's the trophy with handles slightly smaller than Gary Lineker's ears when United beat Benfica at Wembley in 1968, with Bobby bagging a brace in a 4-1 win. Bobby was also instrumental in England's 1966 World Cup triumph, when beating the Dirty Hun in a thrilling final by four sore bottoms to two. On the left side of this midfield quartet, I've chosen Ryan Giggs. <laughs> the noisy neighbours thought they were being clever in their youth recruitment policy when they signed Giggs when he was just an embryo in his mother's womb. But as soon as he learned to talk, Giggs' first words were, this club is Bobby's. I don't want to play for these blue-nosed wannabes. I want to join a club with some class, integrity, and have a long-established history. And so a star was born when he joined Manchester United. The wiry Welsh winger went on to be a true legend and a fan's favourite. You'd have to be stark staring mental not to include Georgie Boy in any all-time great United side. Best by name and best by nature. This cheeky chap here is revered as one of the greatest players ever to play the game. Best banged 178 goals, and probably twice that many dolly birds at his time at United. I gave up the booze in the winning in the late 60s, George once said. It was the worst 20 minutes of my life. A lesson for us all there, I think. And in fact, when I die, and they lay me to rest, I too want to go on the pitch with Georgie Best. Question this mercurial Frenchman's parentage, and you're likely to receive a roundhouse that'll probably take your head off. Yes, it's Manchester United's answer to Hong Kong Philly, Eric Cantona possibly the most influential of all the Johnny Foreigners that have played in the Premier League. He was inspirational in bringing the league trophy back to United for the first time in 27 years, and became the man who usurped Dennis Law's crown as the King of Old Trafford. Who are Cantona was often heard from myself and the chaps from the Rotary Club. After a sniff of the barman's apron, of course. Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for now. Why don't you join me next time, when I'll be bringing you another episode that I've just made up called What's My Team? 
Well, I'll be introducing you to the painted portraits of my substitutes that are all fine for a place in this hallowed first team. In the meantime, why don't you take a look at my website at davysportraits.co.uk where you will find further portraits that I've done along with the ones that you've just seen. So, until then, cheerio!